yeah we are actually now what we are doing is we're trying to organize the master class for different conditions or yeah many different conditions uh, we are trying to do this for this year but we couldn't do that last year because uh, we were on a skeletal force actually so um, it was very difficult and we had also had a group practice to avoid to prevent the fellow from seeing the covid patients so instead of the fellows going into the covid um, wards the nephrology consultant would go there to attend to their patients um, because of the covid pandemic our big time uh, older nephrology consultants couldn't come in for um, you know they would come in and see patients so um, that was a big ano to, um, impact also on our fellows because they would the, the older um, consultants actually are very good in educating our fellows also sharing their knowledge and skills with our fellows but we couldn't do this because they decided either to semi-retire or retire fully with the COVID pandemic. So we um, we were one of the early adapters to this um, uh, telecommunication. We adapted to Zoom quite early and we diverted some funds from the department to uh, buy a whole year of Zoom. And this has, I think, some positive things that has happened, some negatives, some positives. Uh, but the positive, let's go to the positive. Some of the consultants that were some most of the time not, unable to attend because um, they had to physic be physically present were able to attend. So we're getting a lot more um, consultants joining in uh, because they don't have to really be there. Um, so um, the consultants that uh, sometimes could not attend were able to attend. Um, the and one thing, the the presentation by fellows may not be a real experience when they get to present uh, in real conferences like big ones. But we've been able, we've been trying to still get questions during the conferences, and um, the fellows have been able to adapt. And um, the other thing that we did was invite international. Um, consultants, doctors, nephrologists to our Zoom meetings and even have them talk with special conferences. Um, we've invited international consultants from hypertension. Recently, we invited um, um, some of the past American Society of Transplantation president to discuss uh, transplantation and immunologic uh, conditions. We invited uh, infectious disease uh, nephrologists from uh, abroad to talk on COVID. And so it has, uh, it has developed and uh, we're trying to see if we can expand that and continue with what we call invited distinguished speakers. It's a lot easier uh, with the Zoom since they don't have to be physically present and they're more than willing to uh, really be invited. No? Um, so in terms of collaborative learning, we, 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 I think it has some positive um, effect. Um, and I don't think it will totally go away even if the COVID crisis goes out because there's still some people who cannot really physically attend the conference and it's always a good addendum to add to your training. Um, the other thing that has happened is that um, some of our old graduates who are now practicing on their own and they had their own institution uh, sometimes join us in this conference. And, and so um, they still get uh, a fresh outlook from a training program on what we're trying to do. And um, on vice versa, sometimes they do get invited, like invite me uh, to their conferences. Um, in, in training programs on Bicol and uh, to be part of their Brenner Club. So it's good to see them and it's good to be part. So I think it has expanded uh, the opportunities for learning. Um, and 
nevertheless, we're starting to have um, soon uh, what we call physical presentation, but limited numbers of of audience uh, just to develop that uh, that you know that that ability to talk good because that's important when uh, you're in training so that when you become a consultant you will also have that 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 skill so in terms of modules and as i said we were doing the zoom um uh, i'm not so sure what projects are implemented um i'm not sure what that means but uh we, we do have a sisterhood and we're trying to sisterhood with uh, Tantok Singh in, uh, in Singapore. And what we're trying to do is develop what we call interactive uh, discussions on cases on glomerulonephritis and peritoneal dialysis. Um, the other thing that has happened, not just for training, but for the department is we now have a lot of Zoom meetings, which can be any time of the day uh, with my department uh, consultants and even the chief fellows when giving us time to discuss important, uh, important directions that we want to take uh, during these COVID times. Um, the other thing that has been affected is the way we accept fellows. Um, we, like the new batch of fellows that we have now at National Kidney, uh, I have not actually seen them until they came in for pre-fellowship. So we did the interviews um, mainly. Um, we have not done a, a, an exam, medical exam. We just did uh, uh, con, um, what we call um, oral exams sort of and focus on the interview and the background medical education of applicants um, to to choose who will we accept nevertheless we were still able to get uh, 60 applicants to the training programs of which we accepted 15 so i think that in what i hear also from the other training programs is they do still get the number of applicants that are required so that's one thing good it hasn't uh, really limited the applicants to the nephrology program fortunately we have come up with new and innovative ways to teach technology is a lifesaver we have relied on it heavily and are still able to deliver effective nephrology care without always having to be at the bedside we also hold more video conferences and lectures. The challenge, however, is to engage the participants since, since there is minimal social interaction, which contributes a lot to learning. We have to come up with opportunities for informal discussion, personal connection, and clarification of delivered content. Now that exposure of trainees is limited for other nephrology cases, we just have to look for the silver lining of the situation. The trade-off opportunities are first-hand experience in public health epidemiology, medical triage, crisis response, resource conservation, and even hemoperfusion experience. One aspect that needs to be balanced is wellness. Trainees are under a lot of mental and emotional stress on account of changes in rotations, the fear of getting sick, and uncertainty about the future, their careers, and personal lives. We try to create venues for informal social interaction and to help maintain cohesion and a sense of inclusivity. With all the shifts and changes that the pandemic has brought, all of us involved in medical education really anticipate resumption of face-to-face -face interaction. We all currently fight a common foe, our present collective COVID experiences may have isolated us from each other for now, but I have faith that due to it, we will emerge stronger, closer, and better persons and nephrologists. What we did was especially, uh, I mean, I think most training hospital rotates 
their fellows for GN and for for transplant in NKTI. So with now we're from Cebu, it's so hard. And even if it, the NKTI had already started opening up, I'm hesitant to send our fellows because if it changes again and lockdown, it's so hard to pull them out. And they have they, it's, it's my responsibility. So what we did was even uh, before the lockdown, actually, I, I was already discussing with Dr. Sonia Chicano so for GN, we would try either initially it's just twice a, a year. That is that was the plan even before the lockdown, to have a meeting with Dr. Chicano. It was before we, we were planning to in, really invite her here, since she's from from Cebu. So but since the lockdown, so I talked to her again and have it uh, this uh, virtual. So the first. Uh, our plan now would be every May or June, because it's the start, the new fellow, we will have the basic, then maybe another two cases for the entire, uh, maybe another in October and another in February for an actual case. Uh, so the fellow will present and this, then we will ask Dr. Chicano about the, the, the histo uh, renal pathology. We, we, we have that, that, uh, a webinar on renal pathology that's one then also same thing as was i mentioning a while ago that we would have a webinar within us and we can join it with the other uh, training institution in in our locality to have like transplant like discussion on workup with an either an actual patient that would have work up, they, they have work up, they have to present. So that would be a webinar. Uh, it has a joint force. So actually it it's helping one another, uh, but the sharing, actually that's one thing good about this pandemic. Yung dating kanya-kanya, ngayon we share whatever we have. So the other institution will also share what they have. So at the end, the fellows will learn and uh, make the most out of it. So when drafting your instructional designs for virtual teaching, always think, as one author puts it, of the three E's, enthuse, engage, empower, for you to be effective. The greatest enemy in online education is the multitasking viewer or student to drive the car, answer referrals, Facebook, tweet, and even eat all at the same time while listening to you talk or teach remotely can really be annoying. But that is the reality, especially with nephrology, where it is already facing problems with recruitment of trainees worldwide. We need to evolve our methods to entice future nephrologists. And it all begins in their first year of medical school. If we bombard them with hours of long didactic conventional face-to-face -face lectures, we will surely lose them from the get-go. We need to be enthusiastic. We need to be engaging. We need to empower them, involve them in the learning process. Last year, we were lucky enough to publish a paper internationally in the Medical Science Educator Journal and found out these online video lectures are effective if done properly. From chunking our videos to a maximum of six minutes only, designing it as multimodal and interactive, making it student-centered and abbreviating face-to-face -face lectures to less than an hour. We have extended this virtual model to online assessment. Our local society, the Pediatric Nephrology Society of the Philippines, to our knowledge, was the first group to successfully hold an online written board exam in 2018. And last year, we performed a virtual oral subspecialty certification exam. The COVID-19 pandemic is still a scourge to all of us, and it will remain that way. But there is that silver lining. 
virtual learning is becoming the new normal in education, eating exchange of information and ideas. Of course, there will be birth pangs because of this emerging method of instruction. But that's normal. We adapt and hopefully be effective educators in the process. The UP College of Medicine handles undergraduate medical students. I handle the excretory system module for second year medical students in an organ system integrated medical curriculum. Although I had been using our virtual learning management system already for several years, I mainly used it as a repository of the syllabi, lectures, references, and announcements, as most teaching learning activities were mainly done face-to-face. -face. I did not require students to access the site. Utilization by students and faculty of the learning management system was poor. In the last academic year, however, classes were suspended in the second semester and our module was affected. So we shifted from face-to-face -face learning to a purely asynchronous module as we were not allowed to conduct synchronous sessions, mainly due to poor internet connectivity for about 30% of the student population. All lectures were uploaded to our learning management system in various formats. They could be as videos or annotated PowerPoints or PowerPoints with voiceovers. We created self-assessment exercises, developed paper cases for case discussions in lieu of bedside preceptorials. We experimented on a team-based learning flipped classroom for our module on urinary tract infection. We conducted examinations online using our learning management system. We still required a clinical pathology conference as proof of achievement of learning outcomes for the unit. In spite of not being so tech savvy, our faculty were very supportive of these changes. Our nephro faculty are truly passionate educators, very much willing and able to adapt to the digital platform. Our nephro fellows are also getting to be experts in the creation of visual abstracts. I'm a slow adopter to Twitter, but we have faculty and fellows who are getting addicted to Twitter to keep up to date. 